hey, did it feel like in school and in college it was just easy to make friends? But now as an adult, maintaining adult relationships and friendships is way harder. I want to give you the number one, never fail, surefire way to get at least one friend by the end of this video. Let's get to the show. All right, so I have a few theories of what happened during school and in college where it felt like we had a bunch of friends, but now that we're adults, <laughs> adult friendships are way harder to maintain, right? And so I think that we actually did not have a lot of friends in school, but we had a lot of proximity to people. And this created the illusion of having a lot of friends. But once you graduate and you work remote and you have a more sedentary lifestyle, the reality of these lack of friendships or surface level friendships just came to be the reality. And also as an adult, you don't have the same distractions providing the illusion of friendships like drugs, sex, and alcohol that we had in school and college because we're adults. <laughs> Boom. And number two, I think another thing that's missing from school and college that we don't have as adults is the power of the referral. So in school, people lived on campus. You had study groups. You had spontaneous hangouts in dorms or parties and so on and so forth. And so you just had way more spontaneity in your day-to-day -day life, right? But as an adult, you have much more routine. You live way farther away. Um, so your friends, they're not always your neighbors. And so when you lived on campus or even in apartments or went to school, you had spontaneity of meeting new people in your lunch areas or meeting new people at the gym and so on and so forth. And so you're, there was some intersectionality between people where it's like, hey, I can become friends with your group of friends and boom, I have friends now. And so I think this is also the reason why millennials are having such a hard time getting married because it used to be that, hey, I have a single friend, you have a single friend, I can refer my single friend to you, right? But now that um, we're not in proximity like we were in school, you have to be way more intentional with meeting up opening up your home is actually a planned thing where people have to drive and commute. You have to clean up and so on and so forth. But you know, if you're bored, <laughs> you just pull up on someone in their dorm. Or um, if you want to go way back, you actually used to know your neighbors. And so you'll knock on their door and you'll have f real friendship with them. And so now that we're out as an adult, um, the same ratio or even the same reward of relationship um, there's more investment, right? But in college and school, there was less investment because um, y'all all were in the same proximity. So a little bit of effort, but a higher return in friendships. But now uh, it's way more invested in effort, but you might have less return on friendship because um, people may not be as great. And so it's the same pool of people from college to adulthood, but just your frequency of people was much more um, in school than now. And now that you don't have as much frequency, um, you may invite people over or you may go to something like a kickback or a barbecue or something. And then it's whack. And you're like, oh, I'm not doing this again. I'd rather just stay home. But um, this is not conducive for yourself. So you just have to know just what the scripture says in Hebrews 13 and 2. It says, um, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unaware. And so you have to make sure that you are open and that you are friendly and opening up yourself or your apartment or your home for spontaneity, the same type of spontaneity that we had when we had dorms and when we had uh, off-campus apartments where people would just pull up. And so you have to be uh, hospitable because you might meet some really great people. So yeah, it's hair and miss sometimes. You may meet some sucky people, but <laughs> how are you going to get through uh, and meet the good people if you don't meet some of the sucky people? Because it is what it is. It's just life. Um, I think <laughs> in college and school, we're kind of open to sucky people, but now we don't really do that. So that's my theory of what was happening in school and in college. But what is currently happening as an adult, like going through your 20s and you're currently in your 30s? 
to be honest, I think we were tricked <laughs> and we were deceived on two fronts. One being career and the second being social media. So when it comes to being tricked with career, we all know it. We as millennials, I think we got the short stick. <laughs> we got the worst um, deception, right? They said to us, hey, if you get a degree, you go to college, you're going to get a job. You're not getting no job all the time. <laughs> it's way much more about who you know or entrepreneurship than the actual degree itself in certain fields, right? And I think the same thing came with um, us being fed to pursue careers over relationships. So we see this in the same things with um, marriage, that millennials, yeah, there's some financial, socioeconomic um, issues that are happening as well. But I think one of the parts that we are neglecting is that we are fed, hey, um, go after your career, go after your dreams, go after all this work and grind and all this crap, and um, this will fulfill you. But what we have seen is that um, right now, currently, um, women are the most educated and they are the most financially stable, having the most money, right? But they are the most lonely that they have ever been. And also, it's the same with, um, that's going to be my second point, but social media, that we are connected to more people than we have ever been, and we are more lonely than we have ever been. So I think those are two lies that we fed into. And I think millennials and Gen Z, it was just a social experiment of, hey, we're going to change everything that has been working for the human generation for millennia, and we're going to see if this will work. And it has been a terrible experiment. And also going back to career, when it came to, if you ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, it's the same premise of one of the major themes is that school is not supposed to make you financially independent, nor is it supposed to make you wealthy. School and college is supposed to make you an employee, right? And so what we did, we gave our entire life to good grades, extracurriculars, um, all this stuff that is supposed to benefit our life. But then when we got into the real world and we weren't insulated by college and the academia uh, sphere and atmosphere, we found that it was a whole bunch of crap, right? And so I think one of the things that you have to engage in your life is asking why. Why am I doing this? Why am I in the rat race? Why am I going to college? Why am I going this career field and path and fulfill? Is it actually providing fulfillment? And is money actually fulfillment? Like, why do I believe what I believe? And so I don't think that we think deeply. And the same thing is happening in our um, relationships. We don't have deep relationships. Um, we have way more quantity of relationships. So we have surface level conversations. We have surface level relationships. They're all superficial. And what are you craving and why are you feeling unfulfilled? You're doing everything that doesn't actually provide life with joy. But if we see through the scriptures, how like Jesus operated in his life, he went to weddings, he had dinners in people's homes, and he also had church community that he lived one-on-one -on -one with his disciples. And this is Hebrews 10 and 25. It says for us not to be neglectful to gathering ourselves together. And it says, forsake not the gathering of the brethren. But it tells us to exhort one another so much more as we see the day approaching. So like, hey, um, this life is short. Make sure that um, we're gathering together in faith-filled um, communities and that we're doing things like prayer, fasting, Bible study, and so on and so forth. And so another social experiment that I think we were tricked on <laughs> on a large scale, just like um, academia, feminism, um, is atheism. We took out the spiritual bond of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, for the intellectual exploration of self. Um, Self-pleasure, self-indulgence, selfies, all the stuff where it's just focused on us, right? And what we have seen is that, again, this is the most lonely generation. Suicide rates um, skyrocketed in 2011. This was the first generation of 
um, kids, students that had social media fully integrated with us. That's my generation of high school, 2011 and also 2015 of college. And it was just awful that we believe that, hey, um, if we ne- neglect God and do whatever is right in our own eyes, be in our own gods, that it will actually bring forth more life. But Jesus said that he has came to give us life and life more abundantly. And the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And so we have destroyed um, relationships with not being um, monogamous, but being polygamous through um, hookup culture, casual sex. Uh, we added a whole bunch of drugs and all this freedom, but that freedom only made us more in bondage to sin and addictions. And so I think that's another thing that we just neglect, that we have taken out the family structure, the spiritual structure of faith and Christian Christianity. And we have said, okay, um, we're all going to be fine taking out all these staples of life. We're not. (laughs) And so that's another reason it's hard to make relationships as an adult because we live such a godless life in a godless academia and educational years that now we're just godless adults, um, except for those (laughs) who are in the faith. And um, I did want to harp on this um, social media experiment because that was my point number two of why it's harder to make friends as an active adult um, because we have so much access to everyone that we have, number one, um, comparison and comparison is um, killer of contentment. So we're not content. Um, And number two, it creates the fear of missing out. Right. And so we're going to places trying to be omnipresent everywhere at once that we never create depth in any of our relationships. And also it creates the illusion of intimacy with others, because instead of calling them, you see them on social media, you like or you comment. You don't even sometimes you don't even DM. And from that, you think that there's depth in your relationships. Well, there's not. Right. And so when you actually meet face-to-face or in person, you don't have the relational safety to create like in-depth conversations. So everything is surface level. Hey, how's work? How's school? Um, Sports games, celebrity gossip, all this crap. And so because of that, no relationship is standing on solid ground because of social media creating a bunch of superficial, shallow, And another aspect of the relationship, something has become transactional in our relationships that should have no type of monetary value to it. Relationships are priceless. This is friendships. This is romantic relationships. And so now there is a lack of safety in relationships. And um, even says like in the scriptures and Proverbs, like a gossiper so is discord among friends. And so there's no type of integrity in relationships. There's no type of um, true communication because everything is via social media. We're never in the moment. We're not present. We're not prayerful. And so um, this is just the hardship of friends right now. And um, this was foretold in scriptures. This is Second Timothy um, 3 and 3. It talks about in the last days how people will fall away from God and indulge sin and the devil and godlessness, right? It said people will be without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incident, fierce, despisers of those who pursue truth, right? And so, so that's the bad news. What is the good news? What hope (laughs) do we have? How can we fix this? So there are two scriptures um, that I want to give for like, hey, how to get friends and how to maintain good relationships. And it's Proverbs 18 and 24. It says, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And so in the Hebrew, the scripture actually means something very interesting that you have never heard before. In the Hebrew, it says a person that has many uh, companions will bring himself to ruin. But there's a brother that sticketh, there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, right? And so, again, if you want really good friendships, um, that scripture is saying the quality of the person is better than the quantity of friends, 
right? And so you're like, hey, man, um, I'm a really good quality friend. Um, I will also like good quality friends, um, but it's not working. It's not being reciprocated, right? And so I think um, John 15 and 13 explains this um, pretty well of like, hey, what should we do to do this? And it says, John 15, 13 says this, no greater love thou hast than this, that a person would lay down his life for the sake of his friends. So I made a guarantee by the end of this video, you will have at least one friend. And so I will make another video about like how to be easy to love. And it's this scripture right here that no greater love than this, than a friend to lay down his life for a friend who laid down his life for you is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for your sins that you may have relationship with the father. You'll no longer have tension or enmity with God because of your sin, but you may draw nigh to him, believing in his death, burial and resurrection. And so this is one um, thing that makes us open to having relationships with others and showing ourselves friendly that we may have friends is that when we are in the love of God, right? And we are keeping his commandments because this is John 14 and 15. It says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That first, you must be a friend of God and then you will be friendly to others. So you will have more friends, right? But the greatest way to end friendships is godlessness and sin. And um, sin and breaking his commandments ruins friendships. And so it says in scripture, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And so right there, it says like, hey, you have all the friends in the world. But if you're not a friend of God and you die and go to hell, your life is worthless. Versus if you're a friend of God and then he's your only friend, you'll have life eternal. And then you'll have all the brethren, all the people in heaven um, being your friend. But if you see um, Jesus, that he had at least three friends with his inner circle and the 12 disciples. And so people loved him. He was attracted. Um, he was attracting them and he was attractive. But even him being perfect, people killed him. And so um, there is security in yourself that you need to get when it comes to the love of God, right? So this is what we need in our life, the fear of the Lord and the love of God. Um, and so this is how we can be secure. And this is the prayer that David prayed is like, even if my mother and my father forsake me, um, the Lord will never leave me or forsake me. And so I think that's really important. But um, number two, it says, hey, if you love me, keep my commandments. So very practical. Number one, you have at least one friend if you're a friend of God, truly um, keeping his commandments, not disobeying him, not living a devilish, godless life. But number two, um, it says this is pure and undefiled religion that you will visit the orphan, the widow and our unspotted from the world, right? And so this is one thing in Matthew 25, where Jesus is like, um, I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was in prison and you did not visit me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. And uh, the disciples are like, hey, when did we see you naked? Or when did we not visit you while you're in prison? When did we see you hungry and not help you? He says, what you have not done to the least of me, of these you have not done unto me. And so it's like, hey, I don't have any friends. Um, how about instead of thinking of yourself, you think of others and like the scripture says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And as you give to others, showing yourself friendly, being a friend to others, you'll have friends. So as you take care of the poor, the widow, the maimed, the lame, the blind, um, people who cannot repay you, um, you will be repaid in heaven, but also you will be repaid in this life with Hopefully friendships. It's not always promise as we see in Jesus case, but uh, most likely I think orphans will love you. <laughs> I think um, widows will love you. And most of God, most of all, God loves you. So if you want to have friends as an adult, make sure you're living a Christian life. Make sure that you're in community, that you're in prayer for even God was having a problem with this with evangelists and ministers and disciples of like, hey, the harvest is plenty but the laborers are few. Pray to the God of the harvest that he will send laborers. So if you really want friends, pray to God and that he will send you friends, but also do the work <laughs> that 
is called of being a follower of Jesus Christ and a disciple. Uh, make sure you have Christian friends. I know that right now, even finding a good church is hard. It's like a spiritual wasteland out there, but there's still good churches out there. The Holy Spirit uh, will build his church. It says um, Jesus will build his church. So um, pray and the Lord will give you wisdom and discernment of a good church and a good church community and finding good Holy Spirit filled friends that will pray for you, intercede for you, um, exhort you, rebuke you, correct you, because um, friendship is not acceptance of everything that you do, but um, love covers a multitude of sins. And so, and love also rebukes and corrects so that you will save the sinner from his ways. And so, yeah, um, follow Jesus and uh, <laughs> believe on him. Thanks for watching. Make sure that you join our Bible study. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, it helps YouTube algorithm and gets this video out to more people that you could be friends with. And even comment below and you might be some really good Christian friends um, in the comment section. I don't know these people. <laughs> be safe down there as you're commenting. They may be weird. Thanks for watching. Um, the next video on screen is uh, my tips of like, hey, how not to waste your 20s. I'm turning 30 next month or this month or wherever, wherever you watch the video. Um, millennials, 2000 babies or 1990 babies. Time has got you.